welcome back to Tabletop Assault, I'm David and today we're bringing you a really quick, short, snappy review first hands on the new 9th edition Space Marine Codex so um, to give a bit of context to this review as well we've had a bit of a couple of test plays, playthroughs and it's been fun, enjoyable and there has been a few updates to this edition um, some more important than others but mainly one thing I would say is going from 8th to 9th there hasn't been too much of a change to how you're going to play your Space Marines armies um, with a few nice sort of tool items added to your tool chest. So what are you going to get with the 9th edition codex? Really simply you're going to get all your stratagems in here for all your Space Marine armies and um, that will also include some of the unique ones for like Imperial Fists, Raven Guard etc. However expect down the line you will have your supplement codexes coming out with more unique stuff in there for named characters uh, and possibly more unique things like Psychic Powers and uh, Legion Traits. So you have to start off with a whole bunch of units. I haven't even counted yet how many units are in this but trust me there is more than was what was in the 8th edition codex. Uh, you have pretty much everything you need. You have your Battleforge rules in this codex. You will have your standard army rules, match play, crusade rules, which I know a lot of people have been talking about at the moment. Uh, I won't go over the crusade rules yet. That'll probably be saved for a separate video. However, if you're really into your narrative play uh, and you want to run fully with Space Marines, this is going to be the book for you. You've got your data sheets, war gear, points, updates, and your rule reference pages as standard in there. So going into sort of detachment rules, one key thing that has been added and updated to your Space Marines is it's more important than ever now to try and fit your army within a detachment and stick along with your chapter. Reason for that is you'll make sure you keep your obsec rule, which is really important. And this is called, um, I think it's called Company Command. Um, you'll also have certain restrictions on your army as a whole. If you keep within your detachment, you get a wee bonus. If you don't, you take lots of units outside that detachment, that's fine. One key thing for Space Marines is Lieutenants. Now, we all loved in 8th edition, that Lieutenant, to give you all those sort of wound abilities. I think GW is sort of woken up to that, and they want to try and restrict how many of those sort of rerolls or abilities you get. So you can include a maximum of one Captain model and two Lieutenants in each detachment of your army. There's a few things we'll come on to the lieutenant page that you can kind of help to support that. But again, it's one captain per two lieutenants for each detachment in your army. You've also got all your chapter tactics stuff in here as well, which if you keep within your company command, then you'll get the benefits of that. Chapter tactics, however, there has been a sort of complete addition of an inclusion of more Space Marine factions into your chapter tactics. So I'll just show you these two pages right here. As you can see, you've actually got more factions than you had in the 8th edition codex. So just to run through the ones you're going to get to currently use, you obviously have chapter tactics for Dark Angels, White Scars, Space Wolves, Imperial Fists, Crimson Fists, Black Templars, Blood Angels, Flesh Terrors, Iron Hands, Ultramarines, Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Death Watch. Uh, I believe these are in here just you can kind of play with these armies until obviously their main supplement or standalone codex has come out down the line. A couple of key things I want to point out. You've seen already through a lot of updates on Warhammer Community some of the changes to the chapter tactics. For example, obviously Space Wolves had the addition of Heroic Intervention. is now applicable not just to standard units like characters, but basically the entire faction gets it um, as a way to implement into their army. Death Watch Xenos Hunters is a new one as well. So each time a model with this tactic uh, makes a melee attack against Tyranids, Eldari, Orc, Necrons, Tau, they get two reroll hits of one. In addition, after both sides have finished deploying their armies, select one battlefield roll. Until the end of the battle, each time a model with this tactic makes an attack against an enemy unit with that battlefield roll, reroll, wind rolls of one. A lot of the faction chapter tactics have sort of two options, not just first roll. Uh, they have a second rule to go along with it, which is really nice. So you're getting a lot more flexibility, tactical flexibility when you play. Imperial Fist, the one that we all love, uh, that's still got the same standard. Uh, you don't get the benefit of light cover. So it's been a bit more specific of no cover. It will just remove light cover. So hard cover, dense cover, those rules still apply. Um, it's only light cover that is removed. 
and obviously got your usual unmodified uh, hit rolls of a 6 with your bolter weapons will give you an additional hit but it's nice to note that most chapter tactics will now have sort of two abilities rather than one which is really really nice um, and obviously you've got extra ones in there like death watch and stuff to use Moving on, um, you've also got your standard build your own chapter tactic. Now, there is a whole plethora to choose from. So you can create your own successor chapters. Some are similar to the ones previously, but a lot of them are new. We just encourage you guys, any space room players out there, study these, look at them. There's a lot of fun combinations you can make to run with your new Space Marines army. Uh, chapter Command. So there was a recent report on Warhammer Community about what Chapter Command is. Um, and it's really, really nice. As before, for example, if you were to get a chapter master, you'd have to pay command points to use the stratagem to make one of your guys. Now you just straight up pay points. So if you're playing match play and you've got, say, 2,000 points, you'll dedicate 40 points to create one of your guys, a non-name character, into a chapter master. But the great thing about this, though, is you actually have an ability to make a captain a chapter master, Chaplain, a Master of Sanctity, Tech Marine, Master of the Forge, Librarian, a Chief Librarian, which I'll definitely be using at some point because I love my psychics, an Apothecary, a Chief Apothecary, an Ancient, a Chapter Ancient, and a Company Champion, a Chapter Champion. Now, you've seen already in the Warhammer community that you've got these options to upgrade these characters, but what you didn't necessarily see is if you upgrade one of these characters, you're given access to a unique table of abilities and relics for those characters. So, for example, a chapter master will get an optional warlord trait to take. They will also get a relic, an optional relic to take instead of the standard ones in the codex. Um, and that runs, that theme runs throughout the rest of the upgrades. Um, one of the key things you want to look at, for example, is if I go to the chief librarian, if you were to upgrade your librarian to a chief librarian, and again, you're only allowed one of these upgrades, so you can't have two chief librarians, only one. Um, the Chief Librarian will then know one additional psychic power from the chosen discipline and can attempt to deny a one additional psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase. For an upgrade of, at the currently at the moment, 25 points, that can be really handy, especially against those Thousand Suns. You've also got additional relics, warlord traits. The additional warlord trait is you can add one to your psychic tests, always handy. And the relic is called the Neural Shroud. Increase the range of the bearer's psychic hood to 24 inches rather than 12. A psychic hood, guys, as you know, is plus one to deny. That is always really handy. You can make your psyker a really strong, powerful psyker. But the same goes for those apothecaries and the chaplains as well. I know a few players that love running chaplains. You'll love the chaplain abilities. So chapter command is a really nice way to make those characters a little bit more unique. Um, without having to spend command points, you just spend straight up points upgrade your character uh, and it's uh, there's a lot of really good options to choose from stratagems now stratagems was something really interesting and it might take a wee while to to get around this because i think we're still waiting on further information and clarity from games workshop and a couple of these but your stratagems are basically broken up into different categories of stratagems which have not really had the full luxury of using what those categories are at the moment so in the battle reports you're about to see when we use these we're giving access to them all at the moment so for example, you have battle tactic stratagems, epic deed stratagems, you then have requisition stratagems, strategic ploy stratagems, and you also have war gear stratagems. Now from what we've assumed, war gear stratagems seem to be assigned and located to keywords on your data sheets, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, epic deed stratagems seem to be associated with characters. Requisition stratagems seem to be getting your extra warlord trait or your extra relics. Uh, and your standard battle tactic stratagems seem to be quite generic uh, and across the army. There's a couple you want to kind of point out. Um, transhuman physiology has slightly changed in the way that it's changed for it's only affecting primaris units. And the cost has slightly changed. So it still ignores wind rolls of 1, 2s and 3s. But for a unit of 5 or less, it's 1 command point now. A unit of more than five, it's two command points to use. Additional, what I want to kind of touch on as well, is the use of war gear stratagems. So this was one that took us a while to kind of wrap our head around. We're all used to vehicles, dreadnoughts, your tanks, throughout the, um, the Spaceman Codex, having smoke launchers. 
Now smoke launchers normally was you just purchase the upgrade and without shooting you would simply just uh, make yourself slightly harder to hit. Minus one to hit was the, the common trend. Now smoke launchers is no longer a thing on vehicles or any units that would have access to them. It's now a keyword called smoke screen on the unit's data card and it's a stratagem to activate smoke launchers or smoke screen. Well currently it's one command point and it will allow that unit minus one to hit when targeted. What it does mean however in match play is that you can really only do that once per phase so you can only do that again for one tank rather than four or five tanks you want to keep alive. For example you've got three rhinos advancing them up the field you can't smoke launcher them all anymore to have minus one to hit. You really have to be quite tactically you know selective of what one's going to benefit from it. Uh, war gear strategy, another one to point out is also melter bombs. Melter bombs are no longer sort of an optional war gear upgrade as such. A melter bomb is now a stratagem that only certain units with the right keywords can take. It's one command point, but if that unit gets into melee or engagement range with a vehicle, you can spend one command point to activate a melter bomb if the unit is eligible to take that stratagem, and they'll do 2d3 mortal wounds on that vehicle really nice if you're deliberately hunting down a vehicle with that unit and I think from what we've seen so far it's uh, assault marines that seem to be able to take that ability. But again there is tons of stratagems to choose from and the Spearsman Codex in particular they seem to have one for every scenario whether it's getting more rerolls to hit, more rerolls to wound or more survivability such as ignoring wounds or certain upgrades um, there is something for everybody in your stratagems. Um, but yeah, and you'll see that in the battle reports as we, we show them on the channel. Warlord traits, I'm going to kind of skim over this quite slightly, but Warlord traits haven't really changed. You still have your standard um, Space Marine Warlord section, and then you also have your Vanguard Warlord section, which again is dependent on the keywords on the unit, and then you also have your chapter specific Warlord traits. The Warlord traits you have is uh, still sort of similar to the ones before. For example, Storm of Fire is still in there. However, the aura abilities for 9th edition have changed. They now affect the keyword core. So as before, Storm of Fire would increase AP on all units within a certain range of your character. It's now only units, bar the character, that have a core keyword on their data sheet within range of that character will benefit from the additional AP on, I believe, Wind Rolls of 6. So the stratagems, sorry, the, the Warlord traits are still sort of the same and similar as they were, with a few subtle differences as in the keywords that are being used. Um, we'll just touch on some of the chapter specific ones. Now on the channel, we obviously play Imperial Fist, so you have Architect of War, which is very, very similar to what it was before. Well, a friendly Imperial Fist core, so that's the core keyword, unit is receiving the benefit of cover within six inches of the Warlord, each time attack with an armor penetration of minus one is allocated to a model in that unit. The attack has its armor penetration reduced to zero. Before, all units would benefit from that if they were in six inches of the Warlord. It's now only core units. And core units, again, tend to be your infantry units, your intercessors, your, your tactical squads, your terminators, that sort of thing. But again, the Warlord traits have been slightly updated, which you'll see when you get a chance to look at the book. But a lot of them are very similar. It's just they no longer affect all units in certain ways. It's dependent on the keyword that comes with their, with their data sheet. Relics. You have all your usual classic relics that Space Marines have always had access to. The Armour Indomitus, the Shield Eternal, the Standard of the Emperor's Ascendant. But again, they've been slightly tweaked and modified. Um, with regards to some of the tweaks I want to point out, the biggest ones that we spotted was the Armour Indomitus, which we kind of thought was always going to slightly happen. So adds one wound to the bearer's characteristics, uh, two up armor save, and again one phase to get a three up invul. Now looking through this codex, the reason I want to point this out is three up invuls, which we'll come to in a moment, are very hard to come by now in ninth edition, and as they should be. Three up invuls with the bane of eighth and seventh edition. Ninth edition, they're a rarity. However, if you're still looking for your three up invuls to keep your character alive, a space beam player, you've got the Armour Indomitus, so that's one to, to look out for. Shield Eternal, which was usually your 3-up Storm Shield stratagem, eh, relic, has completely changed, and it's gone in line with the new Storm Shields. So again, that's now a 4-up invul, adds one to the armour characteristics of the, the unit. 
uh, and ignores a wound on a five up each time they suffer a wound. Shield Eternal is a fantastic thing to take to keep your character alive and I'm really excited to hear some of the combinations that people are going to find for Shield Eternal for their characters um, as they go. Again though you have a whole plethora of relics to take. Um, a lot of the relics as well, you look in the Space Marine books aren't chapter specific because they're going to come out with their own supplements down the line. They're just your weapon specific and it's the same rules. You purchase the weapon, then you replace the weapon with that relic. Uh, again, they're the same relics but a slight tweaks or additions in certain things like keywords or to come in line with new uh, war gear upgrades like Storm Shields. You still have your Psychic Disciplines, your two tables in particular for Space Marines. Librarius and uh, Obscuration Discipline. I may have just butchered that word. Uh, Obscuration is, is obviously for Psychers, I believe, in sort of Phobos armour. So that table is still there. So that's all your sneaky little guys. I don't like to use those, mainly because I have no Phobos models. But the Librarius Discipline, we have a couple of really cool wee changes I want to point out. Now again, some of the Psychic Powers have now got dual abilities when you cast them. Uh, for example, one that really stood out to me was Null Zone. Now, Null Zone, as we already know, was a involve save denier. But what it was was model specific within the aura field. It wasn't unit specific. So it was quite situational and had a really short range. It still is 6 inches. It's 7 plus to cast. Any unit now within 6 inches, not wholly within, but any unit within 6 inches cannot take uh, involve saves against attacks, which is great. But as a second sort of uh, backup ability here, um, until the start of the next psychic phase, when an enemy psyker unit is within six inches of uh, the psyker who's cast null zone, they half their psychic tests. That can come in very handy, again, very situational. You're probably putting your psyker in a lot of danger, so you want your Terminator librarian probably kicking about with that. But again, I'm glad they changed the first ability to be units rather than models. That feels more right, especially when you've got our rivals, the Chaos Space Marines, with Dex he Death Hex, which basically takes out a unit symbol. Again, you've got your whole bunch of uh, psychic powers. You've got 12 to choose from at the moment because you've got 6 with Librarius, 12 from Obscuration, and you're going to obviously have your Legion specific ones going down the line when those codexes uh, come out. Litanies are pretty much exactly the same. There is only slight change with the litanies is the keywording again. Um, rather than affecting all units within certain auras when the litanies are cast, it's uh, core units. So that's going to be infantry units, your terminators, your intercessors, your tacticals, that are within range of the chaplain when casting it, not as much as the, all the units within range of the chaplain. Um, so yeah, your litanies are, are still there. If you're really a part of your, you know, your chaplains, you love running your army with chaplains, I really encourage you to upgrade your chaplain. Um, as I said earlier on, with the doo -doo -doo -doo, make him what's called a Master of Sanctity for your chapter command, so you can get extra litanies and be allowed to do more than one litany per battle round. Chapter approved rules section, very very quickly, it's just added the secondary objectives from chapter approved, so you've got purge the enemy, no mercy, no respite, and battlefield supremacy, uh, they've been added to your match play games. Crusade rules, guys, there's a whole bunch of things to make your narrative campaign entertaining, fun. You've got upgrade tables, you've got requisition tables, deed tables. Again, these are for narrative play. I'll let you guys look at them in your own sort of time. Data sheets. So let's go on to some of the things which have changed on the sort of standard rules on data sheets. Again, Warhammer Community has kind of announced this already, um, but you've kind of got the same sort of things for your... Tactical Doctrines are still there, doing the exact same as they were before. Your uh, Devastator Tactical and Assault Doctrines. Shock Assault is still the same, no change there. However, They Shall Know No Fear has changed. Now the reason why They know sure, uh, Shall Know No Fear has changed is morale itself in 9th edition has had a fundamental change to it. And really all it's done is change the wording to each time a combat attrition test is taken for this unit, ignore any or all modifiers. Um, really what that will do is, is help to keep your spacemen kicking about a lot longer than they normally would and spacemen's always having great leadership. That's a change to the rule which sort of fits in with, um, with space marines as a whole. 
Other than that, there's a few things that you will want to spot, which is when using legions which such as Black Templars, Dark Angels, Death Watch or Space Wolves, there are certain units within this codex, as much as they're allowing you to use those keywords, you cannot take uh, with a Space Wolf, Death Watch army for example. And that's purely because when their codex comes out down the line, the units they're allowed to take will be included in those, certain ones in here they will not have access to. For example, um, a Black Templar can't take a librarian for obvious reasons. So if you're going to give all your units from your Space Nomar Black Templar keyword, make sure not to include any librarians. Uh, another one to look out for is um, Space Wolves. Space Wolves cannot take an Apothecary. Uh, that's obviously because they've got their Wolf Priests. An Assault Squad, Devastator Squad, Long Fangs, we all know. Stern Guard Veteran Squad, Tactical Squad or Vanguard Veteran Squad. Those can't be taken. But again, I'll explain what units within this book you can run in a Space Wolf Army, Black Templar Army, a Death Watch Army or Dark Angel Army, but it'll explain what you can't take. So into the units themselves. Oh boy, this is big. There is so many characters, so many troops, so many elites. All I'm going to say is I won't go through all these, but one of the key things is you've got your bike captains back, your bike librarians, your bike units are back in the codex, which you want to see. Uh, and that can only give me hope, this is a wish, but only give me hope that when the White Scar supplement comes out, can maybe has his bike back, the Moondraken, that's what I'm hoping. But that's one of the first things I spotted, is bike characters are no longer part of a sort of legend supplement. Uh, they're back in the codex themselves. You want to be very careful and pay attention to the keywords that are on these data sheets um, because they, they will affect things like your stratagems. We mentioned about smokescreen. So the Predator Annihilator has a smokescreen keyword, thus it can use that stratagem. Not all stratagems can affect all units. Be very careful and just look at your keywords on that. But you've got all your classics as well have been added back in, all your captains, your lieutenants, all the old classic Space Marine models, they're back in here again. But that's all because they've had updated wound characteristics or just general characteristics. Going into sort of troops as well, the rumours are true obviously, your tactical marines have got two wounds. They've got all their usual upgrades as well. Uh, all the units from Indomitus have been included in here, which we thought. The Storm Shields now across all data sheets have been aligned to be 4 plus invul and plus 1 to, to armour saves, which makes sense to me. Um, a lot of the, the, the units as well with their, their weapons, so a big one to point out was there was a rumour that a Thunder Hammer was switched to 4 damage. It's still 3 damage, it's still minus 1 to hit, it's still times 2 strength, minus 3 AP, 3 damage. So just a key things you may have seen online, some leak, leaks, some rumours, double check your data sheet. Um, however, everything in here is nice, neat and tidy. One of the key things I, I really do like about this, for example, is it clearly states what your upgrades are, what you can allow to have and what you're not allowed to have. And you'll find that most of your points for your weapons and your unit's data sheet have already been included uh, in its overall points cost. And that includes power cost for you power players out there as well. Um, didn't really see any key units that were standoutish that you might want to know that's in there because all your dreadnoughts are there, all your tanks are there, all your troops are there, all your characters, no named characters, this is the Space Marine Codex, but everything is there that you've seen so far and you've all sort of seen the data sheets. Um, on that point, points wise, there has been a sort of upscale in some points from um, the previous uh, chapter approved. Uh, and a couple of things to stand out is captains have gone up either 5 or 10 points. Uh, some of the troops have gone up by a point or two as well. Um, but they're neatly laid out for you in a very easy to understand and follow section, which is your points value section, which I'll try and get some pictures to show into the video. But your points value is your unit along with the upgrades that are available to them and it's listed out. There's no flicking through pages to find out what you can and cannot take. You have your units purchased and its overall cost and then any additional things that go along with it. So for example, uh, Assault Terminators, just to explain this to you. So an Assault Terminator unit, if I can find them, doo -doo -doo -doo, Terminator Assault Squad. So Terminator Assault Squad, they cost 33 points a model. 
But what that actually factors into the overall cost is that Storm Shield, should you take that. The only points that you'll actually pay to upgrade the unit is if you're deciding to take Teleport Homers or Thunder Hammers. The actual additional weapons or a Storm Shield has already been factored into that unit's cost of 33 points. And that you'll spot as a trend throughout this, uh, this codex. A lot of units with their original starting war gear is already factored into the core cost per model. It's any interchangeable items such as weapons or war gear, there may be an additional cost to it and it is clearly listed out below. If there's no additional cost to swap out that weapon or, or war gear, it's not listed because it's already factored into the model's original purchase cost. And then with that, that brings you to sort of the end of the codex which is essentially you've got your nice glossary page to go over any key or rare rules which uh, you might want a bit of clarity for um, but the codex overall it's well laid out you have a clear definition to now go and find your unit and the points that go with it the war gear section as well has all the the items even if you think you're missing an item such as melter bombs which trust me i was looking for a while it's probably became a stratagem it's one of those war gear stratagems we spoke about earlier so double check that. Your unit data cards, again, really nicely laid out, but just pay close attention to the keywords that are in there because again, they're most likely gonna impact stratagems now, uh, making stratagems even more important. Let's just say this, I should have said this earlier, drop pods, guys, we need to start using them again. You can still deep strike in turn one or battle round one, that hasn't changed. But the Spaceman Codex overall, you're still gonna find yourself playing the same way necessarily as you were in eighth edition. Um, so your playstyle doesn't really have to adapt or change. Me as an Imperial Fist player, uh, I don't see my gun lines changing, my choice and intercessors changing, or the loadout for my tanks or any of the vehicles changing. Um, all that's going to slightly change is those stratagems and those auras that I'm using for my characters throughout the army. There's a couple of nice rebalances throughout this codex, such as Storm Shields. I think it's something that people have been asked to be addressed for a while and they finally have done it and it feels fair. Um, stratagems overall look really nice, neat and tidy. Traits look really good and you've got a couple of nice things to make, for example, your chaplain more unique through those extra abilities by paying more points or make that librarian more unique. Overall, I believe Space Room players are going to absolutely love this edition of this codex. It's got everything you need to not just run a Space Room army but all the other chapters along with it until your supplement comes out. So yeah, let us know what you guys think when you get a hold of the book in the comments down below. Hope to hear what kind of lists you guys are running along with anything you feel works really well with the new edition or stuff you wish maybe necessarily wasn't changed as much because um, there has been a few wee slight subtle changes. Comment, share, like and subscribe. Check us in the links down below for all the things on Facebook, social media that we're doing on the channel. Patreon, support the channel. We hope to see you in another Tabletop Assault Battle Reports.